Alright guys, let's begin with hemodynamics now. This always used to be a non-IMP topic in everybody's undergrad time, right? So we'll, we'll develop a relationship between velocity and the cross-sectional area of the blood vessel, right? They both are inversely proportional to each other. And velocity and blood flow are directly proportional to each other. So here is aorta, the arteries, the arteriole and capillaries, venules, veins and the cable system, right? You'll notice that veins have little larger diameter than the arteries, right? And if you sum up the uh, cross-sectional area of every capillaries, you'll find that cross-sectional area is very huge for capillaries as compared to arteries and veins. Okay, now since cross-sectional area is inversely proportional to velocity and capillaries have maximum cross-sectional area, the velocity in capillaries will be minimum, right? And since veins are little larger than the arteries, the velocity in vein will be a little low than the arterial system. So in short, the arterial system is a high velocity system as compared to venous system. And in venous system, you'll notice that venules have less velocity than veins and veins have less velocity than the cable system, right? So a direct question, velocity of blood is maximum in from the following option, the large vein has largest, largest velocity. If it had been arterial system in the option, it's the arterial system which has a larger velocity. Small airway has laminar airflow because look we say that velocity is inversely proportional to cross sectional area. So if, if this is the airway which is dividing and here are the ultimate small airways, you'll find that the cross sectional area increases. That means you take the cross sectional area of this one and you sum of the cross sectional area of this one and you sum of the cross sectional area of this one. You'll find that this has the maximum cross sectional area, hence the velocity will be minimum. And this is the reason why small airway has laminar flow, not turbulent, right? 50% increase in radius of a blood vessel will cause increase in blood flow by it is given by Poiseuille's equation and it says that velocity is directly related to radius which has 4 power. So we can calculate 1.5 raised to 4 which gives 5. Which of the following increases turbulence in blood flow? Look here is the formula for the Reynolds number rho v d upon eta rho is the density of the blood v is the velocity d is the diameter of vessel and eta is the viscosity now it says that if the reynolds number increases the turbulence in the blood vessel will also increase so reynolds number is directly proportional to the turbulence now if you increase the diameter of the blood vessel the reynolds number will also increase and turbulence will also increase. Which of the following is true about cutaneous shunt vessel? These are also called thoroughfare channel. You might have noticed that when you are in the cooler environment, your tip of the nose, your hands and soles are getting cooler faster. That's because your blood is shunting from that side and it is going uh, where it is needed, right? So these have important role in thermoregulation. Distribution of blood flow is mainly regulated by arterioles because it has pre-capillary sphincters, right? Which of the following favors filtration at arteriolar end of the capillary bed? This is a very basic question we are learning since your childhood that increase in hydrostatic pressure or decrease in oncotic pressure favors the filtration. Look here is a decrease in oncotic pressure of the interstitium. If it had been capillary, this could have been the correct answer too. Mean circulatory filling pressure, it's actually the arterial pressure when your heart stops beating, right? Let's say your heart stops beating and you take the intraarterial pressure and again your heart starts beating and again you take the intraarterial pressure. The change of that, that magnitude of pressure can give you idea about the venous tone. Let's say if venous tone was high, then again that arterial pressure would turn out to be high, right? The blood pressure measured by sphygmomanometer is always higher than the intra-arterial pressure because when you measure the blood pressure with the help of cuff, it first forces the skin, then muscles, then it inflates the, the brachial artery, right? So this extra amount of force needed due to skin and muscle 
is adding up to that the blood pressure which we are uh, measuring with the help of cuff so it's higher than the actual intra arterial pressure next is the concept of mean arterial pressure let's suppose you have 0.8 second of one cardiac cycle out of that 0.5 second is in diastole and 0.3 second is in systole what's diastolic blood pressure 80 mm of hg and systolic blood pressure is 120 mm of hg now it's actually mean of this pressure which is called mean arterial pressure now how you find mean of this one let's say this diastolic blood pressure is remaining constant right for 0.8 second so you take diastolic blood pressure simply as it is and you want mean of this one 0.3 is approximately one third of 0.8 seconds so you take one third of systolic minus diastolic this volume right systolic minus diastolic so you calculate this turns out to be 2 diastolic blood pressure plus systolic upon 3 and it's approximately 93 mm of Hg and this is the important indicator of cardiac oxygen demand so this one is the mean arterial pressure and cardiac oxygen demand is directly promotional to mean arterial pressure